Good morning. Good morning. I take pleasure in introducing our guest speaker for today, who happens to be a good friend of mine. <coughs> Dr. Oksensha <laughs> Ching Alarcon Limha is a full professor at the Far Eastern University who has been designated as scholar in residence to do special projects for the FEU president. She was a faculty of De La Salle University since 1990 and was vice dean of the College of Science of this university from 1994 until that time when she was awarded the Fulbright Hayes Student Grant as Singer Scholar at the Ohio State University School of Teaching and Learning in 1999. While in Ohio State University, she assisted in the critical pedagogical rethinking project on mathematics education funded by the National Science Foundation in the USA. Dr. Limhap held other positions such as Director of the Summer Institute of Graduate Studies of DLSU, Chair of the Science Education Department of DLSU, and Vice President for Academic Development of FEU. Her externally funded research include those funded by JICA, or Japan International Cooperation Agency, British Council, Department of Education, Commission on Higher Education, Department of Science and Technology Science Education Institute and National Research Council of the Philippines. She developed and conducted professional training programs for basic and tertiary <coughs> mathematics teachers nationwide and for state university and college administrators through the Development Academy of the Philippines. <coughs> Dr. Lim Hap published research papers locally and internationally on various topics such as mathematics curriculum development, problem solving skills, assessment of mathematical thinking, classroom pedagogy, transformative learning, teacher development, educational psychology, and use of technology. She was coordinator and co-author of high school and college mathematics books for Phoenix Publishing Incorporated. Dr. Lim Hap was president of the Philippine Council of Mathematics Teachers Educators, MathTed Incorporated, is a regular member and assistant chairman of Division I of the National Research Council of the Philippines. She was part of the team that prepared the standards for basic mathematics education, the standards for mathematics teacher education, and mathematics K-12 curriculum. Currently, she is the lead researcher of a college impact evaluation, which was featured last August 8 to 24, 2015, in, the, in broad sheets like the Philippine Daily, Daily Inquirer, Business Mirror, Philippine Star, The Standard, and online at GMA News TV, Inquirer.net, ANC, ABS-CBN Interactive, Rappler, etc. She was conferred the 2013 Achievement Award by the DOST National Research Council of the Philippines as an outstanding researcher of the Philippines for education. It amazes me no end at how Dr. Lim Hap manages to do all these things while being a loving wife and mother to two grown children and doting grand grandmother to three beautiful grandchildren. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my esteemed colleague and, and a dearest friend, Dr. Ching Lim Hap. Thank you, Dr. Arlene, for that kind introduction. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be back home. This is uh, a homecoming for me, uh, uh, having been out of uh, the LSU for uh, almost four years already, and uh, having been away from mathematics education for uh, about that time also because I've been doing other things okay so uh, I'm happy I'm honored to be with math educators once more and to share with you my insights on 
uh, mathematics education. I intend to, I was tasked to do, uh, to talk about authentic assessment for outcomes-based mathematics education and maybe share with you some historical background on, on the matter. Like, uh, we have to recall that all these reforms going on in education was the agenda of uh, the then newly elected uh, Benigno Aquino. And uh, he stated uh, uh, during the first year of his term that he wants children to get the best uh, education. So he wants to offer at least 12 years for the public school children to give them the same chances for success as uh, those who have long years of basic education uh, in, in the private schools. Uh, consequently, uh, it, uh, the Republic Act number uh, 10553 or Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013 became a law, the K-12 law. Okay, so it establishes, maintains, supports all those uh, systems of education relevant to the needs of our country. And because of that, we now have the K-12 curriculum. And also because of that, we, have, we are starting with the senior high school this school year, and we have the revised new, uh, we have the revised general education curriculum. Okay. So note that in that particular um, law, it uh, puts emphasis also on the use of appropriate language of teaching and learning, including the, the mother tongue as a learning resource. If you uh, remember, um, the, in the administration before that, um, it was uh, um, uh, it was uh, a provision no? that uh, the the medium of instruction should be in English, in pure English. And we as educators really question that because we know that it's not happening in the classroom. Go to the classrooms, and you will hear. Uh, the use not only of Filipino but also of the dialect in the classrooms because it's the only way to interact with the students to make sure that they are le learning in a meaningful way. Now, uh, allow me to share with you one experience I had uh, with a public, a public school where I was there to do a research for the British Council. Actually, what the British Council research wants to find out is how much respect we give to the first language of the students. But of course, of course the, the school doesn't do that. The school just knew that I was there to observe classes. So what I found out was uh, very surprising. I was in a grade one classroom. And from the start of the class, the teacher was speaking in pure English. She showed a poster with pictures and asked the students, how many bananas are there? And the students answered in chorus, there are five bananas. How many mangoes are there? And the, in chorus again, the grade one pupils answered there are three bananas, and uh, three mangoes. So how many fruits are there all in all? And in chorus, they said five plus three equals eight. So the teacher said there are eight fruits. How else can you express the number sentence? And in chorus again, the grade one pupil said, three plus five equals eight. And why do we, uh, why can we do that? Why is uh, five plus three equal to three plus five? And in chorus, the grade one pupil said, 
commutative property of addition. And I wanted to fall off my seat. Imagine grade one pupils, they already know the commutative property of addition. And I, I was telling my graduate students, you be careful with the grade, grade one pupils, huh? you should know the laws of operations because they already know the commutative property of and it was in pure English the whole time I stayed in the classroom. And of course, it was not good for the research result that I had for the British Council. Okay? Um, so, I am glad that in the state of Belgium, well this particular uh, aspect of education, the language aspect, was mentioned. It was emphasized. Also, although, of course, there are, uh, are also problems along the way. And so, instead of the 10-year basic education program, now the uh, government is spending for uh, one year in kindergarten, and then 10, 10 years, the basic education, plus two more years for the senior high. We also have to know that we are member of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, the ASEAN. And uh, because of that, uh, you, you must uh, be aware of the fact that we want to establish stronger ties with them. We, wanted, we want a strong ASEAN uh, organization. And uh, so, the ASEAN community wants to facilitate the free flow of qualified labor in the region. We want to establish a system of compatible qualifications, degrees, and diplomas across the Asia Pacific region. That's the APEC in 2015. And we have we want internationally agreed upon frameworks and mechanisms for global practice and profession. And, and so, because of that, uh, because we are the only country in the ASEAN that has a 10-year uh, basic education program, we needed to add two more, two more years to our basic education. And uh, consequently, we have the new general education curriculum for the tertiary education, which consists of uh, 24 units total. Uh, you have uh, uh, eight courses. And uh, among those eight courses, our focus, the focus of this uh, lecture series is the mathematics in the modern world. Okay. Going back to the uh, educational system, we can look at it in this way. We have input, we have process, we have, we have outputs. And there should be learning outcomes. Okay. So what goes into the system? The student background. Uh, so that is what they carry with them, the student background. And allow me uh, to give you some advertisement. This is what we are trying to look into in the college impact evaluation that we are doing in Far Eastern University. That particular research which caught the attention of the media because we're looking at not only at the demographic profile of the college freshmen, okay, but also what they bring with them, their beliefs, their aspirations, some opinions, their dreams, okay, the activities they do, and so forth and so on. Okay. So it will be always good to find out who our students are. And it's so good to uh, uh, realize that since they are our clients, 
we, they need our help. And so we have to find ways to address the needs of our students. Okay. So what we do with the inputs of the students? We offer them courses, uh, student services as well. And what is produced? Of course, grades because we evaluate them. We find out if uh, they can proceed uh, to the next level. However, we also have to make sure that our students are learning, they develop skills, and uh, the desirable behaviors. And also, with uh, the learning resources that we have in the university, we have to make sure that with the policies, procedures, and governance that we have, it contributes to student learning and growth. Okay. And, and I am happy that uh, the Commission on Higher Education is uh, promoting the use of income-based education. It focuses and organizes an educational, uh, educational system on what is essential for all students to be able to do successfully at the end of their learning experiences. So in that particular research that we are doing, we are, it's a longitudinal uh, research that follows the progress of the students from freshmen up to their terminal year in college. Thus, uh, so, uh, because uh, it involves thousands of, uh, of uh, students, no, participants of the study, we are doing survey, and uh, it's, uh, we have uh, the freshman survey, uh, we are on our second round, so we have the sophomore survey, and hopefully uh, on their last year in college, we will, will be able to have uh, the, shall we say, the terminal uh, survey as they, uh, as they leave college. And from there, we will be able to determine the impact of college the college experience to them as a person, as an individual, as a citizen of our country. And uh, we also look at their employability, not only in the local market, but also in the international market. Okay. And we are glad that there is this outcomes-based education that ensures that our students are learning and progressing in meaningful ways. It starts with a clear picture of what is important for students to do and organizes the curriculum, instruction, and assessment to make sure learning ultimately happens. So it's not an approach, but it's an educational system. You can say, it's an approach for an educational system because it encompasses uh, not only the curriculum, instruction, and assessment, but also the goals, the institutional goals that are set by uh, our uh, schools. In our case, the higher education institutions. Okay. So, this is what the OBE is about. You have to identify the institution's vision, mission, the goal, the outcomes, the competencies of HEI graduates, the program outcomes curriculum map, the standards and demands, the benchmarks, the social and environmental context, until we are able to identify the design we should do for the courses. For the course design, we should be able to identify the learning outcomes, the learning environment, the content and methodologies, the learning systems, 
and uh, the assessment and evaluation. Now, for my illustration, I want to make use of what the uh, De La Salle University experience I mean, has done in this, uh, with this regard. Now, um, I'm using De La Salle University because um, I was part of uh, the one that um, uh, prepared this document for the uh, whole framework of the De La Salle University. And uh, allow me to share it with you. Uh, I understand that DLSU faculty members are given this copy. You are given this which spells out the mission, vision of the university. Everything that you find here is contained in a pamphlet, no? a brochure that is distributed to the faculty members. Okay. So, because according to OPE, you should be able to identify the uh, uh, what, what the organization wishes to achieve, the reason for being, the goals that it has, the competencies and values of the ideal graduate from the, uh, uh, from the school as a result of the academic and non-academic programs. Okay. That is why uh, in this particular brochure, the DLSU identifies the mission vision, okay, which according to them uh, should be a learner-centered research university bridging faith and scholarship in the service of society, especially the poor. Okay. It also identifies the core values of faith, service, communion. Communion uh, that is building a community of uh, leaders, competent professional scholars, researchers, entrepreneurs who participate actively in improving the quality of Philippine society within the perspective of Christian ideals and values. Okay. Now, this same brochure identifies the expected Lasallian graduate attributes, competencies that our graduates should have. Wherever they go, they should demonstrate this. Critical and creative thinking, effective uh, communication, lifelong learning, service-driven uh, citizenship. So these are the uh, qualities, desired qualities, of uh, the graduates of the Nassau University. And they are uh, articulated in this brochure. Now, as I mentioned, OPE is an educational system that organizes the whole program into a curriculum, instruction, and assessment that focuses on what students can actually do after they are taught. Now, also in, their, in this brochure, it has, uh, it spells out a framework for teaching and learning which is called the Lasallian Pedagogical Framework of Transformative Learning. Okay. So in some, uh, in, in some parts of this, it talks about the traditional uh, pedagogy and it, the, the De La Salle University's movement to the learner-centered pedagogy. It says that the view on knowledge has been changed when before knowledge is information that should be acquired by the students now in the LPF or Lasallian pedagogical frameworks this says that knowledge should be a result of a students inquiry action or experimentation so students should be the one to construct their knowledge by doing some exploration, investigation. Of course, it starts with an inquiry, some questions that they should be asking. Now, when before, the teacher is the primary source of knowledge. 
in this brochure, it says students should be able to identify questions and develop some inquiry plans with the help of the teacher. And the teacher should, uh, of course, encourage the students to ask those questions uh, about uh, the knowledge they want to learn and uh, explore ways of doing that by uh, looking at multiple viewpoints, interacting, collaborating with one another. Okay. When before, a good lecturer is an effective teacher. Now, uh, in this LTF, they want teachers to be able to set the learning environment for collaborative inquiry, self-assessment, and reflection. When the lecture format was uh, deemed uh, good, the, uh, was preferred, now it creates uh, an atmosphere that encourages critical and creative thinking, expression of a variety of viewpoints. Now for tests, when before, it's uh, usually uh, factual and procedural. Now we want to find out the cognitive growth that has taken place while doing the course in class. So maybe they may use conceptual representations or problem solving. Okay. Now, <coughs> for the program outcomes in the OPE. Now, uh, the program outcomes should be able to identify the competencies in that particular subject or course. But those competencies are identified with the help of KSA, knowledge, skills, and attitudes. Okay. So uh, what sets of competencies do learners demonstrate at the time of graduation from the program? To what extent will each in, uh, intended outcome be taught and assessed in the program? And then uh, how can it be developed uh, progressively, the pl uh, proper learning environment, the teaching learning systems, support processes, procedures required to achieve the desired outcomes. Okay. Now, I looked at the syllabus of the math department, and uh, I think I already have the permission of the math department to present this. So these were some of the um, program goals that they identify. In that uh, particular syllabus on mathematics in the modern world, okay, so it's about lifelong learning, so that they will be able to keep abreast of the developments in the specific field of practice. And I'm sure you saw, uh, you saw in the lectures you had yesterday how uh, relevant the use of mathematics is in the developments that are taking uh, taking place in our society. Okay, so uh, communicate effectively through oral and uh, in writing uh, using both English and Filipino. So we do not discourage uh, discourage the use of Filipino. Uh, if the students can learn better with the use of Filipino. Uh, uh, then we allow them to express themselves in Filipino. Of course, what we want is for them to be able to share their ideas, express it freely, or express it freely. Okay. And of course, we also want them to be, uh, become competent in the use of the English language as well. But we should not ex uh, stop them from uh, using Filipino in sharing their mathematical ideas because that is their first language. Okay. So perform effectively and independently in multidisciplinary and multicultural teams. Recognize uh, professional, social, and ethical responsibility. And then appreciate Filipino historical and cultural heritage. So uh, demonstrate broad and coherent knowledge and understanding in the core areas of mathematics. 
apply analytical, critical, and problem solving skills using the scientific method. Gather and interpret relevant scientific data and make judgments that include reflection on relevant scientific and ethical issues. They should be able to do mathematics, of course. Uh, be it the uh, usual uh, basic math or statistical computations with the use of appropriate te technologies. In the analysis of data, pattern recognition, generalization, abstraction, critical analysis, and problem solving. Because these are the higher order thinking skills we want to develop in our mathematics students. Okay. And communicate this information, ideas, problems, and solutions, both orally and in writing. Uh, first of all, uh, of course, we, uh, with their classmates no, and their peers and with their teachers, but also communicate them to other scientists, decision makers, and the public much later. Design and perform techniques and procedures following safe and responsible laboratory or field practices because we know that uh, math is the language of science so we want them to be able to use this language appropriately in other fields connect science and mathematics to the other disciplines so for um, attitude acceptance critical evaluation and inputs from others, appreciation of the limitations and implications of science in everyday life, development of commitment for the integrity of data. Because I know that corruption, cheating, starts with the interpretation of data that students collect in class. So, we should be able to address such key questions as, what do you want students to learn? Why? How can you best help students learn it? How will you know what they have learned? Okay. Allow me to again go back to some historical account of the evolution of the outcomes-based uh, education. We go backward, no? The backward design. Uh, I'm sure you went through some training on the use of understanding by design. Am I right? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Who are familiar with UBT among you? Uh, will you please raise your hands? UBT, understanding by design. Maria. <laughs> Okay, so what about the others? Did you go through some training? Did you use this before? Not much. But you heard about it, right? Yes, with the underst uh, understanding by design. Because it was prescribed, especially in basic education by the Department of Education. And of course, uh, the, especially the College of Education in many schools had to adopt UBD because that is being used in basic education. Okay. No, I just want to point out the similarities of the outcomes-based education with the understanding by design. Okay. Because in UBD, you identify desired results, determine acceptable evidence, plan learning experiences and instruction. And this is basically UBD. You start first with the goals, and that is what uh, that, that, that framework that I showed you earlier tells us. Then you have to determine the evidences, no? assessment uh, instruments, the evidences for learning before you even proceed to plan your instruction. So that is what being backward is. Why is it so? Because according to UBD, we should be able to identify first uh, 
what students should know the facts, basic concepts, um, uh, procedures, skills, you know, what skills and discrete procedures students should master. We should be able to identify that first you know, because these are the desired results. The understandings, the big ideas that they should understand and uh, maybe the possible misunderstandings and the essential questions, the thought-provoking questions that will foster inquiry, meaning-making, and transfer. We should be able to identify that, okay? Because learning is about acquiring information, certain skills and procedures, and making meaning out of it. And then, students should be able to transfer those knowledge and skills according to UPD. Okay. And uh, students should be able to independently use those knowledge and skills to be able to do on their own uh, with the use of their learning what that long-term transfer ability is desired by the course. Okay. Now, uh, and in fact, we have this particular template, okay, for that first stage. What should be the standards, content standards? How well should students do it? And make sure that all these are aligned to content standards, performance standards, transfer goals, understandings, essential questions, and so forth. This is exactly the reason why UBD became unpopular. Huh? Why? Because of this template, it's so difficult to fill up. Okay? It's so difficult to distinguish what content standards, how different it is from the performance standards, how different the transfer goals is from the understanding, and so forth and so on. Okay. What else did UBD teach us? There is a stage two for the evidence. And we should be able to uh, give, uh, determine if the, the, these uh, transfer tasks. We have to check for alignment. Uh, students should be showing their learning by using these evidences. Uh, what will you collect to assess understanding, knowledge, and skills? Uh, what uh, evidence will provide valid and sufficient measures of all the goals that you stated and then criteria to be used to evaluate attainments of desired results. Okay. And this is the template for UBD. Again, very difficult to fill up. And this gives us the impression that all the time we should be doing performance tasks where you identify the goal, the role, the audience situation, product standards. Okay. And then the alignment. Now, of course, we know that the goals and the assessment should be aligned. The reason why we are assessing learning is because we want to find out if we were able to achieve the goals. Okay. But then, with this template that is so difficult to fill up, then, again, it turned off our teachers. Next, the learning plan. Okay, again, another template. Where are your students headed? How will you hook them? Uh, yeah, experiences uh, and uh, uh, how they were, will uh, explore the big idea and then re how will they reflect and rethink, exhibit self-evaluation, tailor uh, uh, the, the learning plan to optimize the engagement and, and effectiveness of all students, organize and sequence the learning Activities. Again, this, is, this was very challenging for the teachers because, again, we have to make sure that all three stages are aligned. But, as I mentioned before, of course, we have to make sure that the instructional strategies that we use 
are effective in achieving the goals that we set. And thus, all three, the, the, the desired results, no? the goals that we set, and then the assessment that we do, and the instruction, the strategies that we employ, should be aligned. Okay. 